Hello and welcome to Billy Ho Sports. Today is a bonus preview for Friday Night Racing at Santa Anita Park. I uh, already covered the Eddie Logan stakes and then I got to looking at the one for the Phillies. So I thought that would be a good combination. So I took what I recorded yesterday and I will add it to the end of this video. Uh, so for Friday Night Stakes Racing at Santa Anita, we're going to have two stakes to cover here. So just uh, keep in mind that we're going to be going coast to coast here in the next few weeks uh, for some really interesting matchups, match including these newly graduated to three-year-olds uh, on the Derby Trail. Uh, I'll have playlists set up for all the uh, interesting 2024 Thoroughbred Stakes Racing Derby Trails, so check that out. Make it easier for you to keep track of them. Uh, also, in order to make sure you're up to date on all my content, make sure you have that notification bell set. And then a uh, new acronym for the day uh, is going to be LSC, and that is going to be uh, like, subscribe, and comment. Just takes a few moments, and it really, really does help my channel out a lot. So I certainly appreciate you doing that for me. And uh, let's get started. Okay, the first race is going to be for the Phillies, the Blue Norther Stakes. My, one mile on the turf, two-year-old Phillies uh, with some possibilities of, the, of these Phillies hitting the Kentucky Oaks Trail. So, we start with number one, Hattie T, trained by Ed Moger, sired by Force the Pass. She won her first start going six furlongs on the Golden Gate all-weather track. Uh, 21 or 20 to one morning line shot. Uh, it's going to have to run a monster race to compete here, in my opinion. Then we jump up to number two, uh, at the Fona, and, uh, that's John Sadler trained Philly, uh, shipped in for France back in September after an allowance win overseas, then, uh, geared up for the, uh, grade three, Jimmy Durant at, uh, Del Mar going a mile on the turf. She got off slow and got stuck way to the back in that one. She hit the turn four wide and did make a nice rally to finish fourth. But uh, some other horses we're going to cover were in that same race would be number four, Blue Oasis. 20 to one line for Tim Yak Teen. Finished dead last in that, Jimmy. Uh, so she was gassed at the top of the stretch. I don't see her improving off of that. Uh, number six, Zona Verde. Philip D'Amato, trained Philly. She showed the way in that Jimmy Durante. Uh, breaking from post 11, hustled up front by jockey Juan Hernandez. Uh, something that she was not able to do in her previous uh, grade three surfer girl, where she was fractious in the gate and got off slow, and that was effort was just kind of a toss. So the effort at Del Mar was impressive to hold the line wire to wire. Uh, sometimes you don't always see that in a route races as far as turf goes and i don't typically look for front runners myself i like those ones that hit that turn and burn from the mid pack and and then have and just have all the energy to run down the leaders so we'll see what happens uh number eight mo fox given uh trained by leonard powell finished sixth in that same race that we've been, been discussing uh so both the two and the eight antifona and Mo Fox Given both hit the stretch uh, from the very back of the pack. And uh, Hector Berrios chose to try to plow through the middle of the pack and did get bumped around. And she did uh, lose some some uh, position that way, but managed to get clear and had a pretty good improve, improvement on her position. She was coming, uh, just ran out of room. So both of those horses, like I said, Antifona and Mo Fox with Zona Verde setting the pace. I think those are the three horses that came out of that uh, race itself that are going to be contenders here. Uh, number three is Chitalis, the daughter of Gun Runner. Disappointing in her last couple of outings. Mark Glatt has high hopes for the Philly. Uh, Glatt doesn't really have a, too awful many two-year-olds. I've mentioned this before, but he has a really good win rate with him, uh, more than 20%. Nine out of 14 have hit the board. So uh, this one's moving over to the turf from the dirt. She uh, hasn't been able to get get it done in her last two uh, starts 
from that uh, surface. So maybe she, if she does take to it, she can uh, roll on out. So anyway, uh, going over to number five Highlands, my apologies. I got lost my place there for a second. Trained by Peter Miller, sired by Audible. This filly's two for two so far, making a big step up in class. She recently won this uh, nine winners of two, which is a little bit higher class since the, the horses have won a race, but it was a 50, 50K optional claimer. So uh, she was off a step slow, but was able to uh, come back and take control in the stretch as the heavy favorite there. Uh, so Highlands could be on your radar for exotics. I'd say number seven, Maduro, Peter Erton. Uh, very good uh, turf, uh, trainer of the turf. I believe Philly's two-year-olds, that, that kind of nature. But a uh, uh, respected trainer in his own right. Sired by Honor Code, Maduro broke her first maiden out, going five furlongs on the Del Mar turf. That's the only thing we've seen from her. Uh, she got caught inside from the one post, which is really not good for these uh, really short turf races. But jockey Antonio Frizu, uh kept her tight and was able to get the rail opened up down the stretch of the race and closed hard with a late surge for the win. Now, uh, we are finishing out with number nine, April Vintage, is the second entry from Peter Miller. And uh, she is sired by Vino Rosso, who I've been on record as having a very nice uh, first crop of the two-year-olds this season. So they will be turning three. Uh, she has to be a possible improvement candidate, stretching out a mile. Those five furlong shorter races just doesn't seem to be her cup of tea. So anyway, to sum this up on the race, uh, looks pretty fairly wide open to me. Make or break for Tatalis, in my opinion. Uh, two disappointing outings. Uh, I really thought she was going to bounce back in the last race, the uh, the Starlet, but it didn't happen. So we'll see what happens here. Maybe the switch to turf will uh, light it up. But uh, she's a prime pick to win if she does take to the surface. That's for damn sure. So uh, the two fillies that had trip trouble in the Jimmy Durante, like I said, the two, uh, Antifona and Mo Fox Given, good uh, to have on your ticket. And if Maduro is chalky looking, I'm definitely going to leave her out just off that one effort. I don't think that you can judge this horse as being an overwhelming favorite in the race. But if there's good value to him or to her, then I would say go for it. So we will kick it off. Now with the Eddie Logan. Enough of that. Uh, the bonus this Saturday, Eddie Logan Stakes at Santa Anita is intriguing to me because I believe one or more of these entries are going to attempt to make the switch over to dirt after the first of the year to test their uh, derby trail prospects. So this one will cover one mile on the turf for 100K. Uh, recently, we held uh, at Del Mar the Cecil B. DeMille stakes on the turf, and several of the horses are in there, so I'm just going to show that race as part of, uh, uh, you know, to lump them all together, kind of, so to speak. Uh, Charge for Gold was the num uh, is our number one horse in this race. He set the pace throughout, uh, but was unable to hold the line versus the closers in the Cecil B. DeMille but that's pretty good getting out in front and being able to hold on as long as he did. Got an 88 Equibase speed figure. That's what I'll refer to on, on most of these Equibase. So uh, Lord Bullington, number two, is trained by Mike McCarthy. That one I kind of like. Uh, uh, Lord Bullington got an 89. Uh, he had an impressive win, maiden win on Breeders' Cup Day in the Qatar Golden Mile. Then came back in the Cecil B. DeMille uh but lacked some running room late and uh, lost some position because he uh, had to alter course, and that cost placement. Number four, Invincible, is trained by Doug O'Neill. Didn't get a very good run in that Cecil B. DeMille. Uh, dueled early with charge for gold, but he faded in the stretch as well. Only a 76 speed rating in that, so that's not going to get it done. Number seven was Miracle Mark. He got a 92, finishing third in that Cecil B. DeMille, uh, representing trainer Philip D'Amato quite well. Now, 
the winner was Stay Hot. It's the number nine horse in this race. Uh, utilized a, a late kick down the stretch. I, I love to see prevails by a neck over Rothschild, who is another possible uh, turf to dirt derby prospect. A uh, nice bounce back from the second to last place finish uh, for Stay Hot in the uh, BC Juvenile Turf, where I believe he was likely outclassed by a significant margin in that one. But anyway, back up to number three is practically broke, trained by Mark Glatt, won his first maiden test at five furlongs, going wire to wire, holding off the six to five favorite. EJ won the cup. Uh, I think Glatt's pretty underrated as a trainer, so I'll, I'll be looking forward to see uh, seeing what his horse does here, uh, especially when it comes to the turf. He's pretty good there as well. Number five, twirling point, jumping up majorly in class after a second place finish at Turfway and a 50k claimer. Uh, not gonna. I'm not really thinking too much on his prospect or prospects. Uh, but now, sired by American Pharaoh, number six, final boss. Is trained by John Sadler, who's 21% winners when it comes to two-year-olds on the turf. His maiden win was at six and a half furlongs, and he just held on, so I'm not sure how he'll do at a two-turn mile. Uh, he's been worked seven times leading up to it, so his fitness ought to be better. Uh, seven times since November 2nd race, right? So, uh, number eight, American Hope, trained by Philip D'Amato, also sired by American Pharaoh. Uh, his maiden breaker at Del Mar was a mile, and he held quite well in that one. So I will be looking for that. Uh, that was a competitive race. There were four horses at odds of seven to two or better. So anyway, I'm not really sure what to make of this race. It is on the turf, and uh, but I do like Lord Bullington to improve from his effort in Cecil B. DeMille and be in a better position to win in the stretch drive. I think the two stakes races under his belt uh, put him in just a slightly higher uh, class bracket. Final boss for John Sadler has Frankie DeTore aboard. And then you have American Hope, Philip D'Amato, uh, Flavian Pratt aboard. Those two are highly formidable jockey trainer combos. They also have that American Pharaoh in the pedigree. So those are all some interesting horses. I might have more later on in the week as articles will as articles will be coming out on BillyHostSports.com. Don't forget to check that out as well. So lots more content coming down the road to the Kentucky Derby. Till next time, see you soon, and thanks for watching.